WSYR went on the air in 1950 from a downtown Syracuse office building. And shortly thereafter, it moved into a converted garage, kind of catty corner from the Hotel Syracuse downtown. It was 1958 before we moved our studios to here on 1030 James Street. Curly Vadavon Kerr, who was the general manager, um, bought an old mansion, which was demolished, and this is where the new building went. It was a state-of-the-art studio. They gave me a tour of the facilities and everything, and it was time for Denny Sullivan to gang. And here was the orchestra playing, and Denny Sullivan was there, and all the cameras in the studio, and everything else, and the lights, and all this. And I'm going, wow, this is not bad. When TV really got going, it was an extension of radio. Many of the early on-air people in television were actually with our sister radio station, WSYR Radio. And so people knew their voices and learned to like their faces. Uh, we're talking Deacon Doubleday, Ed Murphy, uh, Alan Malaire. Beautiful, isn't it? Kay Russell um, was on radio before she was on television. This studio that we're sitting in right now was the place where she did Ladies' Day forever. Uh, it was the longest running women's program on television and still may hold that record. She had fashion shows, she had a wedding, a bridal show every year, she had a fall fashion show every year, and she brought in consultants too who, who would talk and answer viewers' questions. She had, uh, like I said, antiques, uh, she had s stars from Hollywood. She was very, very good at what she did. You know, it was really um, the place to see everything that was going on in central New York. Everybody remembers Kay because it was almost like uh, you knew her so well. It was like she lived next door to you. That We had a lot of people here who had a lot of different talents and we showed them off. Okay, now you hold on to yours now. Uh, Denny Sullivan yes. in the game. Uh, amazingly, we had an orchestra. Very, very good local show. Nobody had anything like it. It was almost like, uh, for example, a local um, Johnny Carson show. And it worked out extremely well and we saw a lot of uh, you know, famous people, and we had a lot of fun with it. Canyon Jack, uh, Charlie Featherstone, was the host, and he would introduce the movie. He would um, do the breaks between the commercials and say, okay, we're going to take a commercial break now, but we'll be right back, partner. Howdy, this is Canyon Jack. The shows that we get asked about all the time, line. Monster Movie Matinee. <laughs> Monster Movie Matinee was one grabber. They did a lot of good stuff, a lot of creative stuff. I said, don't you agree? Uh, Ipal, uh, you're not listening to me. Uh, forgive me, kind host. It's beginning increasingly difficult to, to focus my attentions, my, my I'm thoughts. I'm telling you, that oh, was the place to go to on Saturday afternoons. Thank you, my dear. A delightful way. You never waiting. saw Alan on full face lovely. on camera. You Thank always saw his I hand with the ring the on it, um, his mm. long fingernails, you and you saw his coffin, and you heard his marvelous voice. And speaking of books, I should continue my entries in this ancient chronicle of the family. Of, of course, kind host. I recall that you were about to add my name. Bill Lape, E. Paul, Lape is E. Paul spelled backwards. He was a staff announcer here uh, in the day when we had people who did our station breaks and said, you're watching WSYR Channel 3. And we knew he had more talent than that. He was as funny as can be, uh, even in makeup, you know. My way, uh, one of these numbers.
and we used to have a piece of artboard that showed the monster, it was drawn, the mansion was drawn. I had seen a, a, a model of a house, um, looked like a, a ghost house, and a small model. And so Alan went out and got it, and then brought it in and said, Fred, can you put this together? And so we all worked and we uh, built the hill out of the you know burlap and everything and shrubbery and the wall that went around it and the monster house on the top. And the whole thing was built to give it more realistic, but it was only a model. It was a cult classic. Goodbye. <laughs> Bowling for Dollars. We finished the news at 6.30. At 6.30, we had NBC National News. At 7 o'clock, they had moved into another studio, moved all the cameras and equipment, and we had a bowling alley in the studio. And they tore out the wall, and they built the bowling alley all the way through from the from the studio all the way back into the storage area. I mean, it was a legitimate alley. We did Bowling for Dollars, Monday through Friday. WSYR-TV, Channel 3 in Syracuse. It was in the early 1980s. We were sold to the Times Mirror Corporation, which is why WSTM, Syracuse Times Mirror. WSTM-TV, Syracuse. And we never changed those um, call signs from when that happened in the early 1980s. A lot of Saturday shows. Saturday Showboat. And now, steaming into port, here is your host, Magical George the Magician. A live kids' audience. We had Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Brownies who would come in and be the audience of the week. It's time. Time for the STM Club with Scooby-Doo. Time for fun with all your favorites. STM Club was an ensemble cast of characters who were behind the scenes staffers who wanted a chance to be on the air. I have to go in and uh, 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 That's all. That's all. It was partly Scooby-Doo cartoons, yes, but also running gags, uh, running vignettes. We had people come in who would show off magic. We had people come in who would show you how to do things. So it was a little bit educational, but a lot of entertaining. In those days, the news was 15 minutes. Hey, we didn't have, you know, you had 15 minutes of local, 15 minutes of national. And that was it. The community's largest industry has a major walkout, some six. Fred Hilligus was the newsman in central New York. He was on radio, he moved to television, he had a 15 minute newscast. Some $800,000 invested in basic structures alone. The some premier news person, uh, he was there for the longest time. Uh, we always had great ratings because we were lucky and had a lot of good, talented people. In the um, late 60s and early 70s, we saw news as the big part of television and started expanding. We had a stellar crew. Steve Croft was one of our reporters. Uh, Steve went on to this CBS show called 60 Minutes, where he's been ever since. Bob Costas, um, a premier sportsman, um, was here was an intern. I remember him when he was an intern here. Um, went from here to St. Louis and then to NBC where he, he was Mr. Olympics for NBC, no question, and covered so many major sporting events for them. One of the big differences between a military and of course, tribunal and Jeff Glor, who was a morning anchor here for many years, then became an evening job, anchor, and staff. now anchors the CBS Evening News. You can always tell there's a sense about certain people, when they sit behind that desk and they put the mic on, they're good. We've been here. Uh, we've been here since 1950, uh, 68 years. That's a legacy. You know, we're there 24-7, no question. Social media has changed us. We're there really 24-7. You're watching NBC3 News at 5. Good evening, I'm Matt Mulcahy. And I'm Megan Coleman. Right now, there is a heat advisory. In Good evening again. Fred Hilligus with more local news. Well, for once... It's one of those things that 
you look back and you think to yourself, wow, not bad at all.